So me, she might jump. <laughs> we'll see. Anyways, Guild Hall is created by Hope S. Wong and AEG. And Guild Hall is actually one of the first games that I started playing when I was getting into tabletop games. So alongside Catan, Seven Wonders, you know, all those gateway board games. I was playing Guild Hall for some reason. Um, but yeah, I loved it all those years ago and uh, I still enjoy it today. So the idea of the game is you are building guilds of workers in the medieval times, which you can see on the front here. So there are assassins, dancers, farmers, traders, historians, and the last one's on the side, <laughs> weavers. <laughs> so there are six different types of guilds, and um, the goal of the game is to gather full guild chapters. So a full guild chapter is when you have collected all five colors of a certain worker. So for example, if you collected five assassins, one of each color. So you will then use those completed sets of chapters in exchange for victory points. So I'll skip the setup for the end since that's the boring part. <laughs> and um, I'll put out some cards as if we've been playing with three players. I think for my videos, I'll probably have two versions of each. So like the first version would be bare bones, just the instructions. And then the second version would be more long form and include parts like this where I'm just setting up. We'll see how it turns out though. <laughs> Nadine's covering a good amount of our uh, play space. <laughs> it's okay. Do what you gotta do, Nadine.
position some of these cards so that there's room for Nadine.
assassinates by uh, discarding a card of one of the opponents. Um, so let's say I play this assassin card. I could choose one of my opponent's cards that they've already played, not from their hand, but that they've already played, and I can put it in the discard. So that's the assassin. Assassin. <laughs> or more already in the guild hall. So let's say it looks like that, and I'm playing a third assassin, then I will be able to assassinate two cards from two different chapters. So I play this assassin, and I can take uh, two cards from an opponent's played cards and discard both of them. If I have four assassins and I'm playing my very last assassin, um, then I can choose to assassinate two cards from any chapter. So, this is a small distinction between the two, but on the last level, I could assassinate from two different chapters, but if I wanted to, if I've already played four assassins, then I can assassinate two cards from a single chapter, which is, I guess, more impactful. So that's how that looks. So the traitor is also, you know, what it sounds like. If you play a traitor, you can trade one card from your guild hall as the played cards and exchange that for one card from an opponent's guild hall. Um, and I say trade, but it's uh, not up for a negotiation. So, you know, you decide what the trade is going to be if you played the trader. So, you know, let's say I want to give give them one of my already played traders and take one of their assassins. I could do that. What I can't do is trade for the same color of the same um, profession. So you can't have duplicate cards in your guild hall. So like two blue traders. So I wouldn't be able to trade this person a card that they already have. So I couldn't give them a purple assassin and I couldn't take a... There's no other duplicate. I couldn't take, you know, a blue historian if I already have one here. So you have to trade for something without creating duplicate cards in a given person's guild hall. So, the next level is if you had two traders that were already played and you were playing a, a third trader, you would get to trade two cards from your guild hall to someone else's guild hall. So, I could give away these two traders, pick up these two dancers, that kind of thing. If you have four traders already and you're playing your last trader of the chapter, then you can trade a full chapter from someone else's guild hall and switch it for a full chapter on your guild hall. So this is most useful if like say we had this situation where someone else had four assassins and I just had one assassin. Or maybe let's say, you know, I had one historian. I could trade this whole chapter of four assassins. I take that and then I give the other person just one historian since that was my whole historian chapter. So that's pretty, pretty useful if you can manage to get that. So that's the trade. The next profession is a farmer. So the farmer is a little bit different and it incorporates these victory point tokens. So these are the same victory points that are on the victory point cards. Uh, they're just in another form. 
useful in filling in gaps. So you'll see some of these victory point cards are, you know, divisible by five. So, you know, if I had this three, I could fill in with a couple um, of these victory point coins um, to kind of get my way to 20. Um, if I don't have time or the chapters to um, get 20 victory points just from the cards. So, unlike the other cards, the first farmer you play won't get to do any ability. So, let's say I already have a farmer played. Here we go. Here's my farmer. <laughs> so, if I play a another farmer, already have a farmer, then I get to take one victory coin. So you can see that at the bottom of this card, it has one. That's the number of farmers that are already in my guild hall. And then next to that, it says plus one victory point coin. If I have, let's say, three farmers already in my guild hall, and I'm playing my fourth or fifth farmer, then I will be able to pick up two of these victory point tokens. All right, so next up is the historian. This is where the cards get a little bit more interesting. The historian can resurrect a card from the discard. So, for example, if I was playing my first or second historian, then I would be able to resurrect <laughs> Nadine's on the move. <laughs> I would be able to resurrect the top card of the discard pile. So, whatever it is, I resurrect it and I put it directly into my guild hall. So, not into my hand. It's already down as a blade card. If you already have that card in your guild hall, for example, if I already had a blue weaver blade, I wouldn't be able to resurrect this. But usually, you resurrect the top card. If I already had two historians played, then um, the third historian that you play, you will be able to look through the discard pile and choose which one you would like to resurrect. So, let's say... is a good way to get more cards 
is kind of tricky to catch on to. So the concept is you are weaving cards in and out of your guild without playing the actions of those cards. So if you play a weaver with no other weavers in your guild hall, um, then you can weave one card from your hand straight into your guild hall without using the action. So this is useful, useful for like the farmers or the dancers especially, but also just useful if you want to get down as many cards as you can. So let's say I weave this dancer into my guild hall. I don't get to pick up a card for that because it's woven. It's not a played card. So that's how you do the first level of the weaver. Let's say I already had two weavers played and I'm now playing my third weaver. Now what I would be able to do is take two cards from my hand, weave those directly into my guild hall, and then weave back one card from my guild hall. So this is useful if you would want to replay a card. So if I wanted to trade again and I didn't have a trader card, um, I could weave back, pick up that card from my guild hall, which then I would have in my hand to use later. So the final level of the weaver is you can take as many cards from your hand as you want to and play them, or not play them, weave them <laughs> straight into your guild hall. So however many cards you have in your hand, you can weave any of them, all of them. The only caveat to that is as you as usual, you can't put down a duplicate card. So I wouldn't be able to weave in another yellow weaver or a, another purple trader. These are already played and you can't put down duplicates. But otherwise, you can weave in however many cards from your hand into your guild hall. And then you can pick up two cards from your guild hall and put them back into your hand. So that's how you play the weaver. It's a little bit difficult to remember and keep track of, but um, it is useful. Once you get the hang of it, you can really pair it with other cards nicely, especially like farmers. And uh, it's a good card. Another thing to keep in mind is you cannot play more than one card of a given profession in the same turn. So, for example, I wouldn't be able to play two traders in two subsequent actions. I have two actions in my turn, but I can't play two of the same profession. However, I will say that the first, you know, year or so of playing this game, we accidentally house rolled it um, where uh, you could play two of the same profession if you wanted to. We just completely missed that in the instructions. So, um, you know, that also was kind of fun to play. I would say both ways are enjoyable. Not allowing two of the same profession requires a little bit more forethought as you're playing to plan for the long game since you can't, um, you know, finish up a guild really quickly. So like, if you have a guild with three, you wouldn't be able to play two weavers super fast in one turn. You have to think more so in the long game. It also gives other players more opportunities to sabotage you with an assassin or a traitor or whatever. However, if you use the house rule, um, it also is kind of fun to play in that you can 
answer is maybe more important and then the assassin kind of becomes a filler card <laughs> which I would say the assassin is the worst card either way but that's just my take if you play the last of the five in the profession so you have all of the colors played Let's see if I can find one. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, no, I want the blue assassin. 